We're going to start with a prayer. We're just going to ask that God would help us to open our hearts so that we can receive from Him today. I'm going to ask you all to stand. Let's take a second and, and focus ourselves on God. Focus ourselves on what He wants to do in your life today. What He wants to do in the situations that you're facing in your family, at your workplace, in your body. Let's close our eyes and just talk to God for a second. God, I pray right now that you would help me to open my heart, God, that you would help me to receive your word, that you would help me, God, to be open-minded, God, to not approach the scriptures, to not approach the sermon with, with too many preset notions, God, with too many mindsets that are, that are set, that are firmly established, but to be open, God, so that I can receive revelation from Your Spirit, that Your Word, God, can speak into my life, that Your Word, God, can take root in my heart, God. I need Your Word to change me. I need Your Word to affect me, God. I need Your Word to minister to me. God, I need You to touch me. I need You, Jesus, to help me. I need You to be my counselor today, to be my director, to be my teacher, to teach my hands to war, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that there be faith in our hearts. Faith, God, to respond to Your Word. Faith to believe that what You said, You meant it, God, and You are able and You want to do it in my life. You want to do it in this church. You want to do it in my workplace, oh God. I pray that your word would be living, that it would be alive, that it would be a river of living water, a spring, a well that I can draw from, oh God. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and worship God. You're worthy of praise, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you, God, because you are good. Because you're worthy of praise. Because you are my Creator and my Savior. You are the mighty God of the universe and you're my best and closest friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mark chapter number 10 says, starting in... Verse number 46 in Mark chapter 10. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then he charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. He calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Before you sit down, would you just lift your hands one more time? Actually, would you just clap your hands? Let's give God a standing ovation. God, you are worthy of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh. I am. 
I am so tired of being this way. It, I don't know why God made me blind. I don't, I don't understand. Oh, I, I don't understand why, why I was born this way. I wasn't a bad person. I, I, I didn't do anything bad. I was born this way. I, I don't understand why God, at, le at least help me. Tell me why, Lord, am I this way? I, it's so hard to struggle this way. It's so hard to, to just live this way. This disability, it's, it's so bad. Lord, I'm tired of begging. Lord, I I'm tired of not being able to do the things that every other person can do. I, I don't understand why you made me this way. What's going on? I, I, I trip and I stumble and I run into things, Lord, and, and, and sometimes I fall and hurt myself. and I, uh, I can't even get up on my own. Sometimes I can't feed myself, Lord. Sometimes I don't know what I look like. I don't know if my hair is disheveled. I don't know if my, my clothes are on straight. I don't know if, if I'm, uh, I don't know if I, I know I have clothes, but I don't know what they look like. I've struggled so long, so hard, and I don't understand all the things that are going on in my life, but, but somehow, God, I believe in you. Somehow there's something inside of me that still trusts you, that still will allow me to believe that you are God and that you are merciful and that you are kind, but I am hungry. I am thirsty, Lord. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. And maybe, maybe I never will, but maybe someday I will see before the resurrection. Someday, God, you can, you can, if you so desire, you can touch me and put vision into my life. You can help me any way that you so desire, Lord. And I know that there's been so many times that I've been bitter and angry and just frustrated at the things that are going on in my life. But, but God, I want to yield them over to you. I want to be in your hands. And I want you, Lord God, to have your way in my life. I want to see the way you want me to see. I want to know the way that you want me to know. God, let me have faith in you. I know you can do it. And, and if I have to keep begging for the food that I can get, I'll beg, Lord. If I have to keep crying every night, somehow I'm still going to believe in you. Somehow I'm still going to trust in you. And, and I know that you're going to guide my very steps and you're going to take me, Lord, to where you want me to be. My, my faith. I've, I've heard of this man, Jesus. I don't know too much about him because I don't know what he looks like. I don't know where he lives. I don't know where he goes. I don't, I don't even know the people that he associates with, but I've heard some amazing things. Is it possible? Is it possible that this Jesus, he is, he's our Messiah? I've heard he does miraculous things. I've heard he reaches and heals and, and he's, I've even heard a story of him raising somebody from the dead. I cannot, I, I, I can't confirm it. I haven't seen it. But boy, that sure would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if he would just come by and he could just speak to me and I could be healed? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be unbelievable if, if he would do that for me? What? What's that I hear? Who, who is that? 
What's going on? What's that crowd doing? I, I can't see, but I can hear. I know there's a big crowd coming. What is that? Who, who's in that crowd? Who's in that crowd? It's Jesus. Jesus? Jesus, the one that, that heals? Jesus, the one that's raised people from the dead? Jesus, that Jesus? Yes, it's him. Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at, look at me, Lord. I need healing. Look at me, Lord. Jesus! Shh, be quiet. He's the master. What do you think he's going to do with you? You're just some poor blind beggar. What do you think he's going to come over here and talk to you? Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? It's my time. Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Quiet. Quiet. No. No. This is my time. Jesus! Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. On me, a blind beggar. I know you can heal me. I know it. Jesus. Jesus. You're not going to believe this. He's calling you. He's calling me. He's calling me. Which way? Which way? Come over here. Come over here. Stand right here. What would you have me do for you? Lord, that I could receive my sight. I know you can do it. I've heard mighty things. And I believe that you are from God. I believe that you are here and you can do it. Be whole. Be whole. Shatoro sita ramara ye. Ida lo sana ile oro sura samara ye. Iha lo sunure yariama. Mighty Lord, mighty Lord. You know, mankind is capable of adapting to many different situations, even extreme things, like, like somebody get, loses a finger. Somehow, the body is able to adapt. Somehow the body, uh, it, it, it doesn't function fully, but it's able to compensate for the things. You lose your big toe. Your big toe is one of your most um, vital toes on your feet. It's that big toe that kind of keeps you balanced and whatever. And, and uh, they say that if you lose your big toe, you, you, mm, you, you've got to rebalance. You have to, your other toes have to compensate for it. It's, it's, um, in the flesh, we have learned to do these things. In the flesh, God that created us perfect, and then sin entered into the world, and that sin corrupted everything. That sin not only took us away from God, but death entered into the body. All kinds of death. Not just live to a ripe old age, fall asleep, and die. There's death of pain, death of sorrow, all kinds of serious cancers, all kinds of stuff. All of these things entered into the world because sin entered into the world. But you see... Bartimaeus found out something. Something that we can find out today. Something that we can learn today. He chose something. He could have continued to sit on the side of the road and was begging, and he could have did that until he rolled over and he died. I'm sure there are many people that have done it, and there are people that are doing it today. But there was something inside of him that said, no, I believe God wants better for me. I believe that God can take away this infirmity out of me, take it right away from me, and heal me, and strengthen me, and give to me whatever I need. You know, Bartimaeus wasn't the only one that discovered that. Mark 5, 
25 to 30, it says this, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and, nothing, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Tim mentioned it about the wisdom of the world. You know, we can go to doctors, and I, I, I go to the doctor, you know, after I pray and God doesn't do something. But they're, they're so limited. They can only do so much. But, but we have something that is so far beyond that, that if we will grab a hold of this, and we understand what God is capable of doing, the sky is the limit. If you can dream it, it's not even what God can do because he can do beyond anything we could ever think of, anything we could ever dream of. So when she heard of Jesus, she heard of Jesus. That's it. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Because when you hear of Jesus, when somebody mentions that name of Jesus, something changes in the room. Something changes the situation right then and there. Jesus. All of a sudden, there's light there. There's power there. God is right there. When two or three are gathered together, there he is in the midst of you. He's there. The situations change. Nothing is impossible with God. God can go beyond anything you can ever think of. Don't, I don't want to limit God in any way in my life. So she heard about Jesus, and she just said one thing. She said, if I may but touch his clothes. What kind of faith is that? I don't have to even talk to him. I don't have to get his attention. Say, Look at me. Come over here and heal me. I know you can. No, I don't have to do that. If I can touch him, that old preach right there. If I can touch him, I am touching all the healing power in the universe. I am touching all the wisdom in the universe. If I can but touch him. That's all I have to do is touch him. And have faith that he can accomplish these things. I, it's not in me. It's not my power. It's not my wisdom. It's his. I touch him. Touch him. Anything is possible if you will touch him. Touch him. So that's what she said. If I can just touch him. So she, reached, she pushed through the crowds. She did. She pushed her way through the crowds. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Wait a minute. I'm healed. She didn't have to jump up and down, yell and scream and do whatever. She just touched him. But something happened in her heart before she touched him. She heard Jesus. She knew something about that man is miraculous. And she believed. Faith was activating. She said, all I'm going to do is reach over and touch him. And I'm going to be whole. Not maybe I think he can do it. I've heard miraculous stuff, but maybe he won't do that for me. She heard and she touched. She acted on the things that she heard. So she did. But you know what? She didn't get there easily. First of all, in that society, women were third-class citizens. Behind the children. I cannot fathom how much she had to fight to get there. Because there was a crowd. One of the versions says, Lord, there's a, there's a press, there's a throng all around us, and you're telling me who touched you? Because, 
because he was touched with a purpose. Do you have purpose today? Do you have a purpose today? Do you have a need that you think that you know God can give you, that God can heal? There's nothing God cannot do. But when we shut ourselves off from God, when we put ourselves off to the side, God doesn't do it for us. Very rarely does God break into somebody's life that way. It takes an interaction. It doesn't stop there. Luke 19, verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. And he was among, the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. So he had everything. He didn't need anything, right? Is, isn't that what our society says today? He's rich. He doesn't need anything. Zacchaeus didn't feel that way. Not at all. Didn't feel, you know what? I think Zacchaeus knew Matthew. That's what they were, tax collectors, right? Hmm. Same town. Hmm. Working for the same government. Doing the same thing. It's possible they knew each other. And he saw something in Matthew's life that he wanted in his life. Matthew may have been rich, it doesn't say. I don't know. But Zacchaeus, he was rich. He was rich. And we think, or many people believe, that if you had enough money, that would solve all of your problems. That's a lie. That's a lie. Don't believe it. And he sought to see Jesus, who was, who he was, and, and could not because of the press, because he was little of stature. Politically correct. He was short. He was short and he couldn't see over the crowd. But he wanted to see this Jesus who we've heard so much about. Jesus, I heard about him. Jesus, there's something about him. I want to see him. I can't do this here? Hmm, okay. I'm going to figure out a way how to see him. Think about this. If you're going to sit there on your pew and do... I'm not picking on anybody. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you think that God is going to react because of who you are, I'll be kind. <laughs> so he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, now wait, let's listen to this. God does everything. Everything you read in the Word of God is specific for things. You, he climbed up a sycamore tree. Does anybody know what a sycamore tree stands for in the Jewish religion? A rebirth. Can you imagine this? I want to see Jesus, but I'm too short to see over the crowd. Uh, I'm going to run ahead. He just happens to run to a sycamore tree and climb up a sycamore tree, which is rebirth. Jesus comes up and he says, hey, what are you doing up there, Zacchaeus? Come on down. I'm going over your house today. What do you think the crowd was thinking? Are you kidding? This man is a thief and a liar and a robber. And he works for the Roman government, the one you're here to destroy, right? Mm. People all around him must have been shaking their head. I cannot comprehend this. But here's what happened. Zacchaeus heard about Jesus. He heard about Jesus. And what happens? He goes, Jesus comes up to his house, sits with him, and Zacchaeus gets something inside of him that changes him. And he says, if I've cheated anybody, whatever it is, I'll pay him fourfold, four times. And not only that, I'm rich, 
and I'm going to give half of everything I own to the poor. Do you think there was a change in Zacchaeus' life? That sycamore tree represented something. It re represented him changing, a rebirth, a rebelieving in the power of God, a rebelieving that, wow, you know what? Just touching his presence. That's so vital to touch his presence. Just touch his presence. You know, this passage of scripture says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, I've always thought, I'm going into that kingdom and I'm going to, just right isn't that what kind of what it sounds like the, the, the violent are going to take it by force let me ask you a question who here thinks that they can break into God's kingdom you can jump up and down yell and scream have all the fits you want do everything you want you can burn your body. You can try to do everything you want. And you know what? You cannot break into God's kingdom. It's not going to happen. I think God has a little bit more power than we do. Just a little. So that can't be really what it's talking about. So, so of course, I have to look it up. So I'm just inquisitive like that. It comes from a few different words, but one portion of the word means when somebody suffereth something, I always said, he's got it, and that's it. You know, he's going to be stuck with it. Really, it's talking more about allowing it to happen. The kingdom of heaven allows the violent to take it by force. It, it opens up and receives it. It suffereth it. But still something has to happen. That person has to become violent in some form or fashion. And it doesn't mean that I go down and I pounce on somebody. What it means is something inside of my spirit starts rising up and, and it, it, uh, it causes me to be energetic. Not that I can break into God's kingdom by force physically, mentally, spiritually, but something inside of me becomes stirred up, energetic. And when I, when I start praying and asking for God for something, and that, that thing starts moving inside of me, and it starts welling up within me, and all of a sudden, hey, I get a little bit excited, and next thing you know, man, you're praying, you could be laying down on the floor crying out to God. Enthusiasm happens. That's what the kingdom of heaven is looking for. It's not looking for a bump on the log. It's looking for enthusiasm. Man, God, you can do this. God, this, this nation, Lord God, it's still in your kingdom. You're still under control. I don't care what I see in this world. I know that you can do this. You're going to take this kingdom back. You're going to bring it back to where you want it to be. I know it. I know it. I believe it. I'm trusting it. What about... The four men carrying their paralytic friend. Oh, man, the crowd is so big, they can't even get close to Jesus. Here's where the violence comes in. Mm. We got to get him there. The only way he's going to be healed is if Jesus heals him. We've got to get him there. How are we going to get him there? We're going to go over there and we're going to kick everybody out of the way? I don't know if that's going to happen. I'll tell you what. I got an idea. Let's go up to the roof. We'll rip the shingles off the roof and we'll lower the man down. Jesus has to see him then. Right? 
That's the violence. There's something inside that there's a necessity to touch, a necessity to reach after him. Something inside of me that is not satisfied until I get to that point where I can touch him. I've got to touch him. I've got to touch him. In that touch, miraculous things happen. In one second, all of your fears can be alleviated. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. The woman from Canaan, whose daughter was vexed by a devil. She's from Canaan. Jesus says, hey, I'm here to the house of Israel. Oh, God, God, you're, I can't take what I have and give it to the dogs. I guarantee you, 95% of us at that point in time would have turned around and said, that's what you think of me, I'm out of here. Hey, right? We're American. You can't talk to me like that. Give me a break. This is God's kingdom. I don't care what country you're from. This is God's. And if he wants to call me a dog, I guess I'm a dog. That's it. But you know what? The crumbs that fall off the table, Lord, the dogs get those crumbs, don't they? And I'll take the crumbs over everything this world has to give. I really want to sit at the table, but I'll take the crumbs because the crumbs are better than what I could get in this world. Amen. 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 I'll take those crumbs. She walked away with a whole daughter. From Canaan. I wasn't even sent to you. you. Do you understand what God is saying to us? Hmm. Let that hunger be inside. Let that thirsting bring you to a place to where you're willing to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Where you're willing to allow people to say things to you that, and not offend you. That's scary, huh? That's how it works. How about Jarius' daughter? Oh, he comes up and says, Oh, God! My daughter! My only daughter! She's a 12-year-old kid! Are you, can, can, I, I need you to do something. Hunger. Thirsting. When life puts you in a situation to where there's something inside of you that starts hungering and thirsting or something brings you to a place of desperation. Don't run from it. Don't fear it. Embrace it. God, I, I don't understand this. I, 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 I can't comprehend what's going on. But God, you are in control. You are able to do this. I don't care what it is. You can heal me in a split second. I played basketball with the guys. I don't ever really like basketball, but because it was with the guys, it was a fellowship, and I sprained my ankle one time. The only time I've ever sprained my ankle in my life. Thank God. Uh, I sprained that ankle, and for one year I, I struggled with that thing. Probably would have been better if it was broken, but it, you know, it just tore everything in there. And of course, you know how I am. I didn't go to the doctor, so I hobbled on that thing for one year. And a few times I got pretty, pretty frustrated with that because I'm I want to be active. I want to go. I want to move. I want to do stuff. And and oh, so I came in. I, that's when the sanctuary was over there. I said Saturday morning. I said God, you can heal me. I'm sick and tired of this. I don't understand what's going on, but I believe you're going to do this, and you're going to do this right now. And I walked out of that door with no pain. It's never bothered me since. <clears throat> I 
Did he do that because I'm something? He did that because he is something. He's, he is God of all. He did that for me. And I worshiped him for it. And I thank him. But all he did was touch me. This is phenomenal. If you'll grab a hold of this. There is nothing, no thing, no thing, say that, no thing that God cannot do in your life and in my life if we will keep presenting it to him and let him touch it. But if I'm going to keep myself back, if I'm going to hold my barrier between me and God and he can't touch me, how can I expect to be healed? How can I expect to be made whole? How can I expect to feel good inside? How can I expect to overcome the world? I can't. I can't because I cannot overcome the world. He overcame the world and I just hold on to him. I hold on to him. And I let him take me where he wants me to go. Two things are very common. Things that get in our way. I came up with another one too, but God gave me two, so I'm going to assume that these are the most important. Two things stop us from getting to where God wants us to be. One, pride. Pride takes all different forms. Pride, I am somebody. Right? That's, that's what we assume pride is. Here's another form of pride. Oh, no, I am so humble. God, is, God, God, he could do anything he wanted, but he doesn't have to. You want people to believe you're humble. That's pride. That's pride. Pride, it causes us to be puffed up in one form or another. But pride puts a barrier between me and God. And, and that barrier makes God seem like he's further and further away. And when God gets further and further away, I don't see him moving like I did before. So my faith isn't as active as it was before. So it becomes a whirlwind out of control. God's not moving. I'm not seeing it, so I'm backing off more, and I'm backing off more, and the gap gets bigger, and the gap gets bigger, and the gap gets bigger, and if we don't catch it, we call it the falling away. Pride is a very powerful emotion. The second one is fear. Okay, one of the five things we talk about is fear of what others think, right? Fear is a great motivator, typically to the negative side, though. Okay? I, I want to overcome something, but I know I can't. Every time I try, it's stopped me. So I'm not going to try another way to do it. Think about that. What are people going to say if I stand up for God and pray for somebody in the middle of a doorway? How's that? 
True story. Right in the middle of the doorway of Price Chopper. I'll pray for you right now, right here. People walking by. Could you move over, please? No. I'm praying. And that's not bold. That's God inside of me. That's God. That's not me. That's God. Because believe it or not, if I don't know people, I'm actually kind of shy. I don't know. When God moves on me, there is no barrier. Well, I'm sure there is. But most barriers just fall by the wayside, and I don't care. But I don't have that great confidence inside of me. That comes from God. God. Not me. God. So, so when God moves on me to pray for somebody, I have a choice. Am I going to believe what God said, or am I going to be a afraid and I've been afraid many times and I've been had those things come through my mind time and time again and just sit back and say I tried to analyze it how is it that in that situation I didn't accomplish what you asked me to do God how something simple even sometimes fear fear I'm really not well, I'll be kind here. I'm, uh, I won't even go there. <laughs> God is good. God is good. And I'm just going to believe him. And when he says to accomplish something, try, I'm just going to try to do it. He's not asking me to do something that is impossible for me to do without his help. Okay? I may need his help a lot. But he's going to empower me to accomplish it. Same thing with everybody. God empowers us. I can't do it. I know you can't do it. But I can. And just believe in me. Just receive of me. And you can do it because I am in you. That's where I want you. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But I believe you can, God. Because when I am weak, that's when I'm strong. When I put myself off to the side and I don't allow all of the junk in my life to control me and I can focus and I can see him and I can see his way clearly, that's when God does miraculous stuff. Miraculous stuff. Pride fear. And if I would throw a third one in, it would be hurts. Okay? So, don't allow these things to stop you. I'm doing my best not to let them stop me. I I am, uh, I don't call my, I don't think that I'm very well, I'm going to say this, but this is going to sound weird. But I don't think I'm really intelligent, okay? I, I can't grab a hold of material and put it in my mind. If it's mechanical, that's one thing. Maybe electrical or something else. But out of those two things, you know. So I'm, I'm in the process of programming all of these Target stores. Every one of the light fixtures has Bluetooth in them. i got to go in there and i got to program every one of these things. We're downloading programs into everything. And... Uh, I'm a peat and repeat person. If I can do it enough times, I can get fast at it. But you know what? It takes me so long to grasp a hold of something and say, hmm, I, I can't use this process. How do I do this? I got to use this. No, I can't do that. I could, no. You know where, you know, some people just go, oh, I'll just do this, 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 and it's over. So okay. You know, and then I don't do it for six months and I forgot all every, everything about it. But you know what? In one aspect, I'm fortunate. You know why? Because it forces me to rely on God. It forces me to seek after his face. It forces me to know that I am weak, but he is strong. And if I can tap into him, 
He's going to help me to overcome the situations, whatever those situations are. There is, there is something about being in God's presence that overcomes all fears, all doubts, all intimidations. And, and just knowing that if I will let God touch me, that's it. If I will let God touch me, I can be healed. Healed of hurts, physically, mentally, spiritually. My soul can be revived. I can overcome. I can be rejuvenated when I come to the end of myself. Just start worshiping God and he rejuvenates me. It's like, whoa, I can do this. It's like I got a new life. And I do because I'm refocused on God. Because I'm putting him where he deserves. Our Father, which are the name, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In David's life, that's how I have to focus it. In David's life, in my life, as it is in heaven, nothing else matters. I'm going to be rejuvenated. I'm going to be strong. It's going to happen. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to be afraid. You know what? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. There's times when I hunger and I thirst after God and I just sit down in his presence and I just say, God, I'm here. And it starts welling up within me. And I can feel it right now. Uh, it just starts welling up and it starts flowing. And it's like, next thing I know, I'm crying. And then God's moving on me and I'm praying and I'm worshiping and I'm, and I'm just flowing with great joy because I'm touching him and he's touching me. And I'm allowing him to move in my life and I'm allowing him to flow in my life. And, and, and he's just touching those areas that are hurt. Those areas where there's pain and there's something causing me, Lord, to not be whole. And you want me to be whole. I believe it. You came. You died so that I could be whole. God wants us to be whole. And it's up to us. It's up to me to reach out and say, God, I am here. I am here. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Could we all stand? Breathe on me. Tarasana la batara ye yoku. Kira sanu rehiariama. De da rosu nulubu raye ya kialama raye. Yes, hallelujah. 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 The altar is open. If you have something you need to be touched from, just come on up. Be prayed for. Let God touch you. Let God heal you. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let doubt stop you. Don't let any, any past hurt, any past pain, don't let it stop you. If I want the Holy Ghost, I've got to get that violence inside of me. I've got to say, God, I don't even know how to do this. I'm not sure how to do this. I get frustrated when I pray for the Holy Ghost. I don't even understand what's going on here. But I have to have it. I have to have it. I need your spirit. I need the power to be into my life so that I can reach out and touch you. So that I can be healed. So that I can be made whole. Do you need healing? Touch right now. I believe the power of God is here to heal right now. 
the school of ministry would go around listen to God's spirit